I guess, first of all, welcome everyone to this webinar with CL Raven and Volvo, where we're going to talk a little bit more about how we've been exploring the outdoors together um, for a couple of months now and what we're planning on doing in the future and some, some good tips and tricks for, for you to get out now when we start to open things up. My name is Martin and we got Henry here as well. Um, we're going to just kick things off with some quick introductions. Um, we definitely want to hear from you, and we have some questions for you at the end where you can get some uh, swag from Fiel Raven and Volvo as well, so make sure you stick through for that, and we're excited to hear your feedback. So real quick, like I said, my name is Martin Hansen. I work for Volvo Car USA. I am the studio manager for a Volvo Studio Manhattan. It is our North American flagship store located in Hell's Kitchen. I've been working there for close to a year now, and I'm in charge of a lot of our marketing and events there. I am also originally from Sweden, and I love the outdoors. So Fjell Raven is, you know, very dear to my heart. It's a brand that I grew up with, similar to Volvo. So uh, I'm really excited to be here today, and I'm really excited to talk about what we uh, done in the past between Volvo and Fiel Raven and Henry as well. Um, Henry, I know you have a lot more experience when it comes to the outdoors and hiking. I'm going to leave it very high level. I have not done any crazy hikes myself, but I would love to hear more about you and uh, what you've done in the past. Oh, well, I, I think you keep up with the best of them. So uh, give yourself some credit. Um, my name is Henry De La Vega. I have worked uh, in the past for Fjall Raven at their Soho store in Manhattan and have recently uh, become one of their local guides, which is a sort of a brand ambassadorship program. Um, some of my notable accomplishments, uh, I have through hiked to the Appalachian Trail and Pacific Crest Trail with my wife. Uh, if you don't know what those are, they're very long hikes. They generally take about five to six months, and both of them are over 2,000 miles. Um, my love of the outdoors started, you know, when I was a little kid. I went through the Boy Scouts and all of that, uh, and have been showing people around in the outdoors in the Hudson Valley area in Catskills for about the last seven or eight years. After getting back from the Pacific Crest Trail, uh, my wife and I decided we wanted to take guiding people a little bit more seriously. And we uh, licensed up with the uh, Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, they have a license guide program. So uh, we did that and created our little company, West Mountain Guide Co., uh, which has been active for the past two years. Uh, and we're excited for uh, many, many more years of showing people around the outdoors. Yeah, that's awesome, Henry. And I know it might be a, a tough question uh, and, you know, I, I think both of the Appalachian Trails and the Pacific Crest Trail is very impressive accomplishments, but if you can pick one of them, do you have a favorite? Oof. That's a, that's a tricky one. I'm, I'm going to have to say, uh, you know, I'm an East Coast boy, so I'd stick with the Appalachian Trail. The, uh, the PCT yeah. is a, a really beautiful uh, long trail, but uh, I, I really love being in the woods. A lot more wildlife, too. I and I think what's exciting is that we actually had an opportunity to do one of our hiking experiences we we're going to talk a little bit more about here in just a minute, but we actually managed to hike some on the Appalachian Trail just outside of, outside of New York City, which I think it's pretty cool that you can get a flavor for, of it just uh, outside of doorsteps, really. Right, and uh, so that's some of the most interesting trail, in my opinion, too. New York's a really fun state to hike through and challenging. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So I think, you know, let's move forward. Let's talk a little bit more about our, about our program, what we've been doing uh, so far, what we're planning on doing uh, moving forward as well. Um, you know, most people might know this, but both CL Raven and Volvo are Swedish brands. Uh, both are very old Swedish brands too. And, and what's, what's funny for me as a Swede is that I, I do see a lot of similarities where uh, sustainability is really important for both brands. You know, we have the Scandinavian simplicity in our design as well. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff that we have in common. And, and that's what, you know, I think this partnership has really been a no-brainer for us. And, and I would say 
uh, you know, very successful too, because I think people see that when, when they come out and experience the outdoors with us. Yeah, agreed. And one of the things that drew me to uh, Fjallraven in, in the beginning was their sustainability. And, you know, that's something that I think needs to be important to everyone right now. Uh, and especially if you enjoy the outdoors. So uh, I agree that the partnership with Volvo was a, was a bit of a no brainer. Uh, really, and, really working out great. Yeah, and you, you actually tried some of our hybrid vehicles too. And, you know, not only are they good for the environment, but you, you could, you know, attest it yourself that you get a lot of horsepower in there too. So uh, like I think you managed pump. to drive our XC60 hybrid and it's, uh, it's a fun car to drive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So just to give you guys an idea of what our partnership has looked like in the past uh, with our hiking experiences is that we've been able to bring together between 12 and 15 people to have a very, what I would call even an exclusive hiking experience with the Henry and his wife, Lauren, where we have met up at either the, the Fjell Raven store, our Volvo studio. We got together in the morning pretty early for being a Saturday, if you ask me, Henry, but I think it's been worth it though, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, early bird gets a worm. Yeah, so we, you know, getting together, have a nice breakfast, kind of talk about the hike, talk about, you know, what we have to expect. And um, it's really important to fuel up too, because most of the times we've been doing some pretty serious hiking as well. I think it's between six to eight miles. Um, so I, I feel like that, that first meal in the morning has been really important. Um, but, you know, it, it's been really great to to kind of get this going and, and see the different type of people that are coming in here. And, and I think while it's fun to be outdoors, I think it's been a great opportunity for us at Volvo and Fjell Raven to really talk about the, what we stand for as a company and, and kind of highlight that and, and not just being in a, you know, you know that yourself working with Fjell Raven and, and, and the car industry too, it's a lot of times you're trying to sell a product and now it's more about just talking about the, you know, what we stand for as companies and what we're trying to do to better the world moving forward. So that's, definitely something that I have uh, truly enjoyed. Right. And I think it's, uh, it's also a nice way for people to kind of experience those products too. Um, whether we're starting with breakfast in uh, Volvo or Fjallraven, you know, people get to kind of see everything in its, uh, its uh, domestic environment. Oh, maybe that's not the right word, but uh, you know, we, we take it we take it from the city out into the wild. So it's it's been yeah. a cool experience. Absolutely. And we, we have now um, you know, in the part of the presentation, we have a few few pictures that we we've had through our we have three hikes here um between Field Raven and Volvo. But I, I would like for you to kind of talk about because I want to give you all the credit, Henry, because you really started this off at the Soho location with Fiel Raven. Uh, what made you want to bring people from the city to, to come and experience the outdoors uh, in the first place, really? Well, you know, I think that the, the outdoors is an important place for everybody. And being in New York for the past uh, eight or nine years now, I've, you know, it's, it's a very urban environment. Uh, and most of my friends that I have are uh, self-called indoorsy. So it's been a lot of fun for me over the years to take people out who've maybe never been hiking, never been backpacking before and uh, show them, you know, what we have to offer within, you know, an hour to two hours of New York City and, and even closer in some cases. Um, so with Fjallraven, the idea that we started with about a year ago was to do a series of monthly hikes where we were taking people they're all free events so it starts with a free breakfast the only thing people had to pay for initially was their transportation and for a year we were doing our monthly hikes where we take public transit up to the hudson valley and harriman area and uh had just a wonderful uh wonderful groups of people experience from people have through hiked before they've done the entire Appalachian Trail all the way to you know someone who's never left uh, New York City before and their biggest experience with nature is something like Central Park uh, where it's really yeah. got exciting was in January when we started doing the hikes with Volvo as it really expanded the range that we could we could travel to 
and initially something you know I wanted to make sure of was that this was an accessible experience for people. They've, you know, they're free hikes. We plan to keep them that way. Uh, and one of the great things, aside from having really awesome rides to, uh, to uh, come up to the trailheads with is, you know, we didn't have to, people didn't have to pay for their own train ticket even. Um, so it, it really opened up, up to a lot more people. Uh, and, you know, again, we have all walks of life come in on these things, you know, uh, people who own their own businesses, people who work for Fortune 500 companies, and then, you know, people who are working retail, restaurant, you know, pretty much everything New York has to offer. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, what's been really interesting, and, and you make your, an excellent point there, Henry, is that sometimes it, it might feel like you're going to put basically 15 complete strangers together. You're going to go out, you know, in the woods. It's the perfect scenario for, for a, a horror movie, right? <laughs> but I think what we've seen instead is that, you know, we have these great conversations around kind of the love of the outdoors, and that's really what's bringing us together. And I, I think, you know, I met some really great people through these hikes where I probably would never had a chance to, you know, cross paths with them if, if it wasn't for this. And, um, you know, to be able to tell our story from Volvo, to be able to tie that in with the Field of Raven and to be able to show them the outdoors and why it's important to, you know, consider to be sustainable in everything we do. It, it's just been uh, a great combination. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm so excited. Um, to, to move forward with this and, and, you know, keep doing it. I wanted to ask you though, so we, you know, we unfortunately only had a chance to do three hikes uh, before we had to kind of scale back and hopefully can get back out again. What are some of your favorite, you know, takeaways from the hikes that we've been doing? Do you have a, a favorite hike um, or, or anything good to share with us? Um, I actually think that maybe the first hike that we did was still my favorite, which the uh, tall picture uh, in the lower left hand of the screen, uh, you can see that it's very misty. We, you know, when, especially with people who are very enthusiastic about the outdoors, weather is not a factor that changes whether or not you're going to go and uh, do whatever activity is you plan to do. And uh, when we have the, the free event, sometimes I get a little nervous when I see rain in the day of the forecast that no one's going to show up. But uh, that's never happened before. And we actually had a pretty good group of people show up on what initially looked like it was going to be a rainy day. I think the night before it said a 100% chance for, you know, the first yeah. seven hours of the day. And we got out and the rain stopped on our car ride up and we were left with, you know, this really beautiful uh, damp forest and something I tell people, you know, if it, if it rains on your hike, it just gives you a whole nother palette of things to enjoy that you wouldn't normally see the lichens, uh, on all the rocks and trees become a lot brighter. It, uh, it really becomes kind of a quiet, uh, magical place, not to mention they're far. Uh, did we see anyone that day on the trail outside of our group? I think one person. Yeah, I think so. I don't think anyone else was crazy enough to be out there. But yeah, I think we were pretty alone. And that was at the very end. And that you could see the white blaze above my head there. That was our uh, our first hike we did on the Appalachian Trail from Harriman State Park, uh, where we went through yeah. the Lemon Squeezer, which was a really fun, uh, challenging uh, part of the hike that uh, everybody helped each other out with. It was a, it was a really good time. Yeah, oh, I, I think that's, that's a, I said, I think that's a great example of, you know, it's not, you know, the hiking is, you don't have to be a, a master hiker by any means, but it's been, you know, some, some really good hiking. Uh, I don't consider myself to be an expert, but, you know, my legs has definitely been aching a little bit after a, a seven hour hike that we've been doing uh, a couple of times now. So, um, you know, it's, it's good to see that people, you know, we're pushing each other too. And, uh, it's really, you know, a team coming together at the end of the day, too, which has been great. And, you know, I, I think that the picture that we can see right above the, the misty one there where we actually get together and we have a dinner afterwards. Um, that's probably also one of my favorite um, times where, 
you know, we spent the whole day outside, we've got to know each other, and then we can stop at a local restaurant and just sit down and talk about our experiences and, um, you know, have a lot of fun to reflecting on it. I, I think, you know, when we sit there and we have this conversation, it, it definitely makes that, you know, couple of hour walks, definitely worth it. So, so that's, um, that's probably, you know, my favorite part of it. I also really enjoyed our, our last hike um, here in March. I thought that was great. I think you mm-hmm. might have to refresh my memory on the name of the state park. Yeah, it was um, Yes, Minnewaska State Park. And that one you're going to be able to see on your right-hand side. Um, we're going to have two pictures there. We had a great group there on the bridge. And then also the first pictures, um, the first couple of pictures really came from, came from that hike as well. Uh, and just a beautiful change in, in kind of scenery where we start to see a little bit more green in the forest. And, you know, we still had some of those winter elements in there too, which, which was great. And it was a lot of fun uh, to hike. We started off, I think everyone was bundled up pretty well. And then, you know, the sun came out and it turned out to be a, a beautiful day. And to your point earlier, you never really know what kind of weather you're going to get. And I think we've been extremely fortunate to not have a rain out and snow out. It's been um, almost perfect condition every time that we've been been doing this so far, which is which is great. Right. So I think, Henry, if if you know, if we want to start thinking about now when people are going to be able to uh, you know do some hiking on their own um, as things start to open up again. I know that state parks uh, have started to open up with some restrictions. Um, hopefully we can get out and we can do some hiking experiences soon again um, when the time is right. What are some of the things uh, you think that people should think of um, as they kind of get out on the, on the trails again? Right. So um, like you said, I, I look forward to taking people back out uh, with us. Uh, as soon as possible, yeah. but, but I can't expect everybody to wait for that. Um, so we've got this little list of some things to uh, consider to hike safely. Um, number one, keep it local. I think right now we're all encouraged to, uh, to stay you know, a little bit closer to home, but there's, there are lots of trails that you can find pretty close to where you live. And I think it's a really good chance maybe even to become a bit of an expert on your local hiking. Yeah, and Henry, what are some, what are some uh, good trails you think that's outside, outside of New York City that people might not be aware of? Um, so some stuff that we have close to us are definitely uh, the Hudson Valley. Um, you know, this is their hiking trails 40 minutes to an hour right outside of New York City where you can get out into the mountains. Um, Even the Palisades, which is right on the other side of the George Washington Bridge, is a cool experience to get out and see some really uh, incredible views uh, towards the city. Um, More local than that, you know, there's lots of exploring to do in public parks that we have around town. So uh, Jamaica Bay, Pelham Bay Park, uh, even Prospect Park uh, all have, uh, you know, a lot of small trails. And, you know, even if what you are used to considering hiking is going on these long, you know, eight mile trips, going on something a little closer to home gives you a chance to, you know, maybe you don't have as much trail to cover, but you can learn some native plants, uh, look out for wildlife, bring a pair of binoculars, and uh, make it a bit more of a nature walk experience. Yeah. Um, something else we have here is uh, multiple plans. Uh, this is an important thing to do almost any time you're planning on going out to do hiking or backpacking. Come up with a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. Um, obviously, we're also all being encouraged to uh, practice social distancing. If you drive up to a parking lot that was plan A for you and you see that there are 20 cars with another 20 parked on the shoulder of the road, that's a good indication that maybe you should try plan B or plan C. And uh, what I like to do is, you know, as I go down my list in areas I am interested in hiking that day, I'll pick more obscure trails. A lot of times, you know, maybe it doesn't have, you know, uh, the waterfall that you're planning to look at or the view you are you're really hoping for, but you can find some really cool hidden gems 
uh, by checking out trails that aren't frequented by other people. Um, at the end of the day, you know, sometimes maybe uh, it turns out that, you know, it wasn't in the cards and everywhere you go is crowded. And at that point, you know, you can uh, enjoy the drive, uh, maybe plan for some drive up vistas. We passed a few really nice ones on our way uh, to Minnewaska on that trip. And that can be, that could be an adventure in its own. And, and I think and a, a, a few things to follow up on that too. A lot of these parks are not going to go anywhere. So if, if one weekend doesn't plan out, it, it might not be the end of the world. And maybe it's better to come, come back at a different time. Um, I also think w what I've noticed myself when I've been out, um, you know, on hikes um, here pretty recently is that the, the parking facilities might be the first thing where they kind of scale back. Um, so to your point earlier, where if you show up and the, the parking lot is full, it might be a good indicator and, and you know, to, to pick a different spot, so, so, so to say. We also have a couple of more, and I like the first bullet point here, because that's something that you've talked about in our previous hikes and something that I wasn't really familiar with, but I think now moving forward, I'm definitely going to pay a lot more attention to. Right. So we, this is something I usually like to start the hikes with is talking about leave no trace practices. And I think as we see a lot more people hitting the trail with the, the free time that we have, it's important to make sure that people know uh, that there is some etiquette to, to enjoying the outdoors. Uh, number one being protecting the resource that we have. Uh, down at the bottom, we've included the seven steps for leave no trace. And a lot of what we're talking about in our bullet points here, line up with leave no trace principles. For instance, planning ahead and preparing. Uh, you know, that is uh, like on the last side, making sure you have several plans, making sure you know the rules and regulations, double checking to make sure if the trailhead that you're even going to is open for use at the time. Um, traveling on durable surfaces, disposing of waste properly. This is one of my favorite ones to talk about on trail is watching out for your snack wrapper corners, uh, which seem to like to hop out of your pocket. Um, something that Phil Raven did for Earth Day last year, and I think we would have done for Earth Day this year was a plogging event where we actually walked around the streets of Soho picking up uh, garbage. And, you know, I think yeah. the end of it, we had several garbage bags worth of stuff and and cleaner streets. And you can do the same thing on trail. I like to bring, you know, a single use uh, plastic bag that I've usually used several times already, um, but I'll take something like that and keep it in one of my pockets. And if I come up on any litter on the ground, I like to pick it up and pack it out with me. Um, to the other side of that, leave what you find. That doesn't include trash. That's talking about wildlife, flowers, rocks, you know, as more people go to the trails to get a little bit of time outside their house, it's really important to try not to impact the trail, uh, you know, to the best of your ability. And an easy way to do that is by leaving things where you want to. Um, of yeah. course. Uh, yeah, sorry, Henry. I, I, you guys can probably hear my dog drinking some water right now. I think that's uh, the beauty of doing a, a webinar like this. One, one point that I like here and something that we also been considering and, you know, as we talk about this, maybe hiking all along has been, you know, a, a great way to do social distancing, um, you know, keeping groups small. So a lot of times when we announce our, our hikes, you know, they fill up fairly quick because we only have a limited, limited amount of people that can join us. And while we would love to have, you know, 50, 60 people on each hike, um, I, I think being able to keep the group small so you can actually uh, follow the leave no trace rules and you can, um, you know, not have that much of an impact on the, on the trail that you're heading to. I think that's, that's something that, you know, not only important now, but it's always been important that, that you take that in consideration. Right, right. And uh, having, a, having a small group side, aside from, uh, you know, helping to leave less of an impact on the environment usually opens up a lot more uh, chances to experience wildlife. Uh, you know, if you want to see some animals or birds going around with a group of 40 people, it's, it's unlikely that you're going to see a lot because, you know, 
they want to avoid us. Uh, so being quiet and keeping your, your group small is a great way to get a little bit more out of the outdoors. Um, and the last uh, point on leave no trace is to be considerate to other visitors, which kind of works into our last few uh, bullet points we have up here. Um, keeping group small, we already talked about that, but of course, in these times, you wanna make sure that you are tracing the people who you're hiking with. Usually it's best to keep it to whoever's in your household. If you're an experienced hiker, going out on a solo hike can be a lot of fun, uh, very peaceful. Um, and then of course, practicing uh, social distancing, um, yeah. which there's, there's few better ways in the outdoors to, uh, or there's few better ways, but going into the outdoors to, uh, to practice yeah. that. Um, but, you know, even while you're on trail, it's important, uh, you know, do respect other hikers that you cross. Try to keep, keep your distance. Um, use the PPE that you're carrying, whether it's a buff or a mask, uh, and just pay that respect to, to the people that you're hiking with. Absolutely. And Henry, before we wrap this up, let's talk about um, some things that's coming up. I want to hear from you first. Um, if you can let me know, what are your plans for your first trip back? I also want to know your favorite local hike. And then I know you're very experienced and it seems like you've done some pretty amazing hikes already, but do you have a bucket list hike still? Oh, yes. I, I think I'll always have a bucket list hike. Uh, there's, there's a... Yeah. a slow but steady leak in my bucket. So uh, that's, that's always being filled up. Uh, my first trip, I think that uh, we will probably maybe do a slide mountain in the Catskills. Uh, my wife and I, Lauren, are working on uh, completing the Catskill high peaks. So we're excited to get back out there and start doing a little bit more trucking. Um, my favorite local hike uh, definitely Harriman State Park, um, going up the, uh, the epic steps of the Appalachian Trail that uh, were just finished a couple of years ago now, uh, to West Mountain Shelter, which, uh, you know, the, maybe you could guess where West Mountain comes from, uh, <laughs> but it, yeah. it is one of my favorite spots. Um, and bucket list hike, definitely uh, the Continental Divide Trail which is another uh, border to border trail on um, going through uh, Wyoming, Montana, Iowa, Colorado, New Mexico. So uh, in the next few years, Lauren and I are planning on strapping on the backpack again and, and going out for uh, five or six months. That doesn't sound like a bad plan at all. I think, you know, my bucket list hike, I have not had a chance to hike as much as I want back home in Sweden. Um, so next time I have a chance to go back home to Sweden, I definitely want to do some hikes up north and explore that. And I definitely bring all of my Fjell Raven gear too, so I can be, uh, you know, as, as prepared as possible. And I think before we wrap up now, Henry, we want to make sure if you're listening to this, uh, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we do want to hear from you. We have some really nice Volvo swag and some really nice Field Raven swag that you can get and we want to give away. Um, so our um, ask for you is that we want you to go to whatever social media channel you found the link to this video and in the comments, uh, we just want to hear from you. Answer some of these questions that Henry just answered. Um, we also want to know where do you think Field Raven and Volvo should go next? What would be another good hiking experience that you might want to join us to and hopefully you can be the one walking away with a pretty sweet backpack or not a free car, unfortunately, but we will make sure that you get some cool Volvo swag though. Um, so Henry, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been great as always to have you here. I can't wait to hit the, the trails with you again and um, everyone else stay safe and healthy out there. Thanks, Martin. Always a pleasure.